Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if Christ be in you, what was he talking about? Spirit of Christ. Then now he's talking about Christ. So in Christ is in the spirit. In the spirit is in Christ. So if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is live because of righteousness. Now observe the next verse. And if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell where? In you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also that's rapture. That's rapture there. He shall quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that what? Put it up. Put it. Shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth where? So the rapture is going to happen inside you. The spirit of God in you fear, will quicken your body and change your body. As long as the spirit is in you forever, how can you miss rapture? So rapture is not a prayer point. The day the spirit of God entered you at salvation was the day you were prepared for rapture. Somebody is here. Are you hearing the sound of if the spirit that raised up Christ? So the speciality of the spirit is to raise, his expertise is to raise, is to raise. So on the resurrection day, what will the spirit do? He will quicken your body. It's not heaven at last. Is heaven at first? The moment the spirit of God entered you, you became heaven. You became God's heaven. That's why God now lives inside you. Where does God live? In heaven. So where does he live? In you. So what are you? God's heaven. If I'm teaching, shout I hear you. That spirit shall quicken your mortal body on the day of rapture. Except you don't have the spirit. That's when you cannot be raptured. But not when you have the spirit. And listen, the spirit has, has been instructed to dwell in you for how long? Very good. Someone said, Dr. Damina, how can you say that even if a believer sin, he is still going to make heaven? I said, so what happens when he sins? What happens? Because believers do sin. He said, my little children don't sin. But if you sin, even God made provision. Don't sin. That's the standard. But if you sin, he didn't say confess. He said, we have an advocate. We have a trusted lawyer who will defend your case. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. I was saying, no, a believer can lose his salvation. You are not thinking. Religion has dampened your thinking faculty. Are you saying that when a believer sins, God will remove him from heaven? Then when he confesses, God will put him back. Then when he sins, God will remove him. So as everybody is sinning around the world, including Christians, God is busy removing people and putting people. What kind of jobless God is that? That's why salvation is eternal life. What is salvation? Eternal life means life without end. So if a, if a believer makes mistake or sins, he is sinning in Christ. That is why Christ that takes away sin will clean him up. Christ is not afraid of sin. He died and took care of sin. So if you are in him and sin attaches itself to you, he cleans it out. It's called the blood of sprinkling. It's called the blood of sprinkling. Not the blood of sprinkle. Not the blood of sprinkle. The blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things. Continuous washing of the blood. When you know it and when you don't know it, the blood is washing.
Am I teaching good in this service? So it means everybody that is born again is rapturable. Except you are not born of God. <laughs> Once you are born again, you are rapturable. You are the body of Christ. He's the head, you are the body. Have you ever seen a head moving without the body? Have you ever seen a body moving without the head? The head and the body move together. All of us are members of the body in particular. He is the head. Anywhere the head goes, the body goes. How can Jesus be raptured without his body? And if you are a member of his body, the day of rapture, where he goes, you go. Religion is wicked. It keeps a man in doubt all his life. Look at that verse 14 of Romans chapter 8. Verse 14, 15 and 16. Romans 8, 14, 15. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Next verse. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba Father. 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So what we receive at salvation is called the spirit of adoption. It's also called the spirit of Christ. It's also called the spirit of God. That's what we receive at salvation. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 for more clarity. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. <clears throat> but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Next verse. To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Next verse. And because you are sons, because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba Father. So the spirit of resurrection or the spirit of redemption is called the spirit of his son. In Galatians 3 verse 2. Look at the way brother Paul talks about this. Galatians chapter 3 verse 2. This only will I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law. Or by the hearing of faith. Now look at how he calls salvation. When you hear the gospel. You say I receive Christ. And sometimes we say we receive Christ. Some have an idea that is religious. I gave my life to Christ. Come and give your life to Christ. Have you given your life to Christ? Which life? Do you have life? Which life do you have to give Christ? You are dead in sins and trespasses. So Christ say, I am come that you may have life. So you don't give Christ life. Christ gives you life. So you don't ask people to give Christ their life. A sinner is bankrupt. He has nothing to offer. It's only Jesus that offers. It is called the riches of redemption. He died to enrich you. We know the grace of our Lord Jesus. How that he was rich. Yet for your sake, he became poor to identify with you. So that by his poverty, he takes you to identify with him. You may be rich. Not rich in dollars. Rich in grace. Rich in his grace. Rich in his grace. So brother Paul says, when you had the gospel, you received the spirit. You received the spirit by the hearing of faith. That means you received the spirit when the word of faith was preached to you. It's called salvation. Ephesians 1 verse 3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly where In Christ. In Christ. Okay? Verse 4. He has chosen us in Christ. Ephesians 1.5. He has predestinated us by Christ. Ephesians 1.6. He has accepted us in Christ. Ephesians 1.7. He has forgiven us in Christ. Ephesians 1.8. He has abounded unto us in wisdom and prudence in Christ. Ephesians 1 9 He has brought all things together in Christ. Look at verse 11. Ephesians 1 11. 
Ephesians 1 11 in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will verse 13 oh yeah 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 Ephesians 1 13 in whom also you trusted after that you had the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after you believe the gospel you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise so salvation is receiving the spirit is it clear what is salvation receiving the spirit so everything he mentions from verse 3 to 11 now sealed with the holy spirit of promise verse 14 ayata ephesians 1 14 which is the earnest of our inheritance until katabala kata kata katabalata jato mekeleda can you see it which is the earnest of our inheritance the word earnest is the word proof which is the proof of our inheritance that inheritance is in us until is in us until until the redemption of the purchased possession what has been bought with a price your body until the redemption of your body so the spirit will keep you until the day of rapture the spirit will keep you the spirit that saved you will keep you until the sound of the trumpet if i'm teaching say i hear you the evidence of all that we read is a spirit accepted forgiven blessed the proof that those things are real is that god gave you the spirit that's the evidence so everything that was given in christ is in the spirit everything that was given in christ is in 